Okay. All right. Um, the next the next point is to uh, discuss some of the key elements of grounded theory. We recognize in in discussing and analyzing uh, grounded theory, and it's very very important that there's always going to be, as um, Strauss and Corbin say, this interplay, right? This interplay between the propositions that I'm making, the theory that's being generated, the theory that's being discovered, and the substantiation of that theory against the data, right? There's, there always has to be this interplay between the theoretical claims that I'm making based on the data and substantiating those theoretical claims in the data, right? It can't just be one. You can't just have theoretical claims that are unsubstantiated, right? So it can't just be uh, data Well, you can't just have that. You can't just have data theory. That's not, holistically speaking, what grounded theory is. It's not the case that we're just merely making um, theoretical propositions based in the data, in our findings. I mean, you could, in a sense, call that grounded theory. The theory is, in a sense, grounded. Um, however, there's a whole half of that that's missing. Right? What you then do, um, and I think it's best practice, is that you then substantiate or verify that your interpretations are right. right. My interpretations are right. Why? Because I can justify it within the data. So, for example, um, the claim that um, the likelihood of um, adult um, alcoholism is increased where um, juvenile sort of experience to or introduction to alcohol uh, um, is present, right? So, if I make that claim, that claim needs to be justified, needs to be validated, needs to be substantiated, needs to be checked, um, needs to be identified within the data. So it's this interplay, as uh, Strauss and Corbin uh, were saying. Um, the key elements of grounded theory, and uh, as far as the elements, there are eight elements, eight key elements of uh, grounded theory, and I want to go through um, sort of systematically uh, analyzing those eight key elements. These are eight key All right, so eight key elements of grounded theory. Um, these key elements are, it's sort of a collection of the main, what I feel are the main concepts within grounded theory um, in just, you know, the, any sort of random order. There is no particular order that these need to follow. They can be rearranged. Also, um, I'm not suggesting that there are only eight. There's far more concepts in grounded theory. And as I said, you can watch, um, uh, you can watch, uh, I forgot his name, Gibbs. Watch, you can watch Gibbs' um, account if you want a more sort of detailed account. I'm not going to get into any serious depth. For me, I picked what I thought were um, the, mace, the, eight, uh, the eight main concepts. Um, and I think once you have a, a sort of a grasp of what these concepts are and the significance that it has in um, understanding uh, grounded theory, you should be fine at a, at a, at a very introductory level. Okay, so the, the first concept is category, the idea of a category. And the question is, within grounded theory, what is a category? Category is a technical term, right? It's a, uh, a part of the lexicon of grounded theory. It's not just a regular sort of word. It has conceptual meaning. Quote, and this is a quote from uh, Strauss and Corbin, uh, quote, uh, a category is, quote, a classification of concepts. A classification of concepts. And I, I think I illustrate this. Uh, yeah. So, um, I'll read that again. A category is, quote, a classification of concepts grouped together under a category. A classification of concepts grouped together uh, under a category. And I actually, I think it's later. I think I drew, yeah. And I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the, the image. For those of you who are interested in sort of jumping ahead and seeing what this looks like, you can go to page 10. I've sort of illustrated this. I'm not going to get to that right now, though. Okay. A classification of concepts grouped under a category. And this is a collection of concepts or incidents, right? A collection of concepts or incidents equals a category. So when we're talking about 
a category. It's a, roughly a collection collection of concepts or incidents. So you can think of a unit, right? The unit being uh, concepts, plural, which, which contain many different ideas. And that this unit, concepts, is a category, right? It's synonymous to it. Right? It's synonymous, it's interchangeable. synonymous is interchangeable with the idea of category. A classification of concepts group under a category. So that a category is, roughly speaking, a collection of concepts, a collection of incidents, right, that creates um, uh, a category. In talking about the collection of concepts, so if you wanted to sort of look at the idea of concepts themselves, I'm not going to get into too much discussion on this. Um, we'd have to recognize that there has to be some redundancy in the ideas, right? So where we have, oops, that's supposed to be an R. Oh, can't write. Right. Where we have so where there's redundancy in the ideas, for example, um, I started drinking at um, you know a very young age. I started drinking at a young age. I started drinking at a young age. What we do is we can create a category based on uh, this concept, right? There is this guy, and there's proper ways to create the terminology. It should be very, very general, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna get into that now. But we're, you're going to be looking for redundancies in the data, right? Redundancies in the data are a good thing, right? It, redundancies in the data are gonna substantiate the theoretical claims, the theoretical propositions that you'll be making later, right? So that our theory is gonna be grounded in effect in this redundancy, right? In the concepts, right? The concepts being uh, a more primordial, a more foundational account than the than the uh, the category. Another way of looking at it, just one more, so we have an understanding, is that we can say that the category C A T. If I could spell this one, C A T E G. Ah, sorry. The category is buttressed by. Right. The category is buttressed by. It's held in the, it's held up, it's elevated, it's substantiated, it's it's made firm, solid, by multiple concepts, right? So one category is held up, it's substantiated, it's buttressed by many different uh, concepts. Is another way <clears throat> is another way to look at it.